Hello. Uh, welcome back. I'll be honest, I already filmed this video once, and it didn't keep the recording, so I'm going to try to be faster. I'm doing a new camera setup. Hopefully it looks nice and I'm all in frame. I can't actually see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to try to be a little faster uh, with discussing today's topic, which is Orchid Mantis Care. Um, I've had a lot of requests to do care videos. Um, I've had a lot of requests specifically to do Orchid Mantises. They're, they're pretty big in the hobby. A lot of people are interested in them. A lot of people want to get them. Um, and there's been a lot of misinformation going out on YouTube about mantises lately. A few big channels have been posting videos about mantis care, and they're too general, and they're not at all about the particular mantises that the people are owning, and I uh, am, am very disappointed in those videos. So this is a orchid mantis-specific care video. It doesn't cover any other mantises. No other species. Except yellow orchids, but those are still orchids, so only those two species. Um, but we're not going to talk about them, really. But they're basically the same thing. Um, so to start off, uh, let's meet my adult female orchid mantis. This is Sylphie. She's recently matured, uh, not so recent that I'm going to hurt her by pulling her out, but, um, she's been about you know, a week and a half. Um, she's beautiful, as you can see, she, she, she's pretty normally colored. She's cream with hints of pink and white. She has a nice brown pattern on her back. She's your pretty standard orchid mantis, if a bit small. She's a little bit on the small side for females, but that's all right. Um, we've also got over here, I've got her boyfriend who doesn't have a name because he's probably gonna get eaten. I hope not though. Um, and you can see he's very small. He is actually a sub-adult. So his next molt will be his final molt. Um, and you can see how much smaller than her he is. And that's pretty standard for orchids. The males are significantly smaller. The sexual dimorphism between them is huge. Um, which is really fascinating. No, you have to stay on there. So first we're gonna talk about housing. Um, ge the general rule is you need something three times their length wide, or two times their length wide, I'm sorry, and three times their length tall. Um, once they're an adult, that ratio is not as relevant because it's developed for molting mantises, but I still try to keep as close to it as I can just to make sure they have enough space to move around. I keep my mantises in my townhouse setups um, these are available in my store. I may be out of stock at the moment, uh, but by the time you see this video, I'll probably have restocked. Um, these are great for both female and male orchids. Um, I wouldn't go any smaller than this. This is the minimum I would house them in. Um, these are nice and square, so they stack well. Uh, I don't stack them tall. I mean wide, sorry. Um, and I, I, But there are other things you can do. Uh, the trick with these is they, they need relatively high humidity, so you can't keep them in something like a netted cube, which I have one right here. This is what I have my orchid, or, sorry, my violin mantids in. It's kind of dirty because they've been eating moths, uh, and they spread that everywhere. Um, so this is your pretty standard net cube. Um, great for drier species like violins. Uh, not at all good for orchids. I would never recommend keeping an orchid in a cube like that. You can also do something like a deli cup. I've got a ghost in here at the moment. Um, I recommend the cloth lids instead of the plastic. This is a temporary housing situation for him. Um, this is great for a male. A male orchid can stay his whole life in this. I would recommend something bigger for a female. Just because it's not quite as high as I would like. You can see, let's see if I can compare. It's about the same height. Uh, it's quite a bit shorter. I would not use these for a female. Um, I just don't think they're quite big enough. Um, and as I mentioned, they do need relatively high humidity. I use a spray bottle. Um, I got this at the dollar store. It's a very fine mist. That way you're not, you can't, you don't drown your mantis in it. Um, you don't want to oversaturate. You don't want to spray your mantis directly. You don't want anything in your container dripping. My dogs are making noise. Uh, sorry. Um, you don't want it so sopping wet that your mantis can drown. You want to do a gentle spray. Because I already recorded this video, I already did my spray demonstration with her, uh, but I will now do it with him. And if I have to record this video again, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, when I spray my mantis, my orchids in particular, I spray 10 times into their enclosure. Like so. Never spray your mantis. You put it in. If they want a drink, they'll go get it. Uh, he doesn't because I sprayed him last night, so he's fine. I spray my mantids once every two days. Um, but again, you don't want to oversaturate. You don't want it to be so damp that the condensation stays over eight to 10 hours. I usually spray them just before I go to bed. And by the time I wake up in the morning, the condensation on the side of the container is already gone. You don't want it that humid the where the condensation stays all the time. Um, I 
prefer using a smaller spray bottle for my mantids just because it's really easy to count the sprays so I can be consistent with my humidity. You could use a larger spray bottle, but you want to make especially sure that you don't spray your mantis with a larger spray bottle. In fact, small nymphs, L1 and L2 nymphs, can drown in a droplet of water. So you have to be very careful with that. Um, I would recommend keeping nymphs, L1 and L2 nymphs in something a bit smaller than this. This would be okay. Um, but you want to keep them in generally smaller containers so it's easier to maintain the correct humidity for the nymphs and so that they can find their food easy. Um, now that we've talked about housing, uh, diet is probably the next important thing. Um, you want to make sure to give them a variety of insects to consume. Um, a variety is always going to make your mantises stronger. Uh, I usually start out with fruit flies. I personally do not culture melanogaster fruit flies. I hate them. They glide. They, they're not flightless. They glide. They have little wings and they glide around and they get everywhere. Uh, I hate them and they're banned from my house. I use Heidi Eye fruit, fruit flies. Um, all of my nymphs have been able to take them. Even L1 and L2 Hestiasula nymphs, um, which are itty bitty babies, are able to take the larger fruit flies. No problem. Um, so that's what I start with. I culture my own. Um, there's a number of recipes you can, or another a number of medium for fruit fly cultures that you can buy online. I'm probably going to start making my own soon, and if I have pretty good success with that, I may start selling it in my store. Um, after they are big enough to eat house flies, um, another thing that I offer to them is waxworms. Very rarely, waxworms are quite fatty. You don't want that to be their complete staple. Um, in addition, I sometimes let the waxworms pupate into moths. That's a much better snack. They love moths. They get a little messy, um, but they love moths. You can also feed things like mealworms. Um, sometimes my adult females will get half a superworm. I just snip it in half with a pair of uh, insect dedicated scissors um, and offer it. I've had no issues with orchids taking uh, prey from tongs. I, they take them from my fingers. I don't recommend that. They will pinch you, and it's it's not painful, but it's unpleasant because they don't want to let go, and they'll just keep pinching you tighter. Um, and they can technically bite. I've never been bitten by an orchid, but uh, that the possibility is there. Um, so that I think the biggest thing is to vary their diet. You don't want to only be feeding them Heidi Eye fruit flies. Um, first of all, because once they're big, that's like a potato chip, they're going to have to eat a whole bag to be satisfied. Um, but also, the nutrients are different between each feeder. Um, the best feeder probably is dubias. Um, you won't be able to feed dubia nymphs to your orchids until they're quite a bit bigger. In fact, I'm not even sure my male is big enough to take it. The female will have no problem. Um, but you do want to make sure that you vary the diet. Um, I personally choose not to breed cricket or feed crickets. There's a bit of a, a difference information um, that come from people who choose not to feed and choose who to feed crickets. Um, I just throw it out and, and choose not to because I just don't want to deal with it. Um, you'll have to make that decision on your own. A lot of people are, have no problems feeding crickets. They, they uh, breed their own crickets. Uh, a lot of people have lost dozens of mantids to feeding crickets, um, supposedly. There's no way to prove that. Um, I hate crickets. That's just really the end of it. I, I, they stink. They eat each other. They're just terrible. They're, they're empty calories. It's just, I, mm -mm, I don't like them. I've eaten crickets. I didn't enjoy it. Um, I don't want to suffer my mantids to it. Gross. Um, so I don't feed crickets. Ooh, someone's texting me. Um, but you can, if you choose to. Uh, I won't think less of you for deciding to. Uh, tell me what you think about feeding crickets in the comments. Hey, uh, let's start an argument, huh? Uh, please don't. <laughs> um, regarding temperature, um, I don't add any additional heat to my uh, orchid enclosures. My bug room stays about 78 to 80 degrees, uh, which is perfect. That's right where you want it. If your room that you're keeping your mantids isn't is about 70 degrees, which I think is where most people keep their, their homes, and that's Fahrenheit, of course, um, you can suspend a heat lamp or a ceramic heat emitter relatively high above their enclosure. Um, you don't want... To, I, I personally don't recommend heat mats. I don't think they're very uh, great for mantids myself. Um, regardless of when you stick it on the side or on the bottom, um, First of all, one reason I don't is most heat mats are not graded for plastics. 
Um, so unless you're using a glass enclosure, which quite a few people may be, um, you don't want to use a, a under tank heater. Um, the only one that I do know that is rated for plastics are the ones made for hermit crabs. That would probably work, um, but they're surprisingly expensive for how small they are, and I just don't want to deal with them. I would much rather use a lamp or a heat emitter um, myself. I use a ceramic heat emitter for my thistle mantises. Um, it seems to work great, but again, I don't add any additional heat to my orchids. Um, I don't feel that they need it. I've had pretty good success without it. Um, uh, you can choose to heat if you want, but if, if your house where you're keeping your orchids is below 65 degrees and you can't heat them up to 80 degrees, I would say don't get an orchid. Um, I don't know how you can live in those conditions personally, but <laughs> maybe an orchid isn't for you. Um, please get a heater. Uh, I don't know why you're having this problem, but please get a heater. Uh, don't do this to yourself. Okay. Um, I would generally rate Orchid Mantises out of a three of five star difficulty. Hopefully I'll remember to include a graphic within my hand motions, and if I don't, pretend that there's one there. Please humor me and just pretend that I did. Um, three out of five star difficulty. There are definitely much more difficult mantids to care for. There's been some sort of misconceptions lately going around on YouTube about the difficulty of uh, orchids or on the internet. They're a little fragile. They're more fragile than some of the bulkier mantises. Um, they're a little. They're more fragile than like a Chinese mantis or a European mantis for sure. Um, but I would say they're on par with a violin, which a lot of people recommend as a starter mantis. Um, they're a little more difficult than a ghost, which is again recommended as a starter mantis. Um, they're not nearly as difficult as a devil's flower mantis or a desert mantis. So in general, kind of a middle of the road difficulty, which is great because they're beautiful and a lot of people want to get into the hobby with orchids. And I do feel that if you if you do your research and you um, make sure that they have the right enclosures and the right humidity and the right food, an orchid mantis can be your first mantis and you can successfully raise it to adulthood. It's not generally recommended to start with orchids. Um, I started with a spiny flower mantis and let me tell you, that's a, that's a story. Um, when I do a spiny flower mantis care video, I'll talk about it. Um, but I've had no problems with orchids. Um, they're great. Uh, he's just crawling around. Sorry, I'm just like watching him. He's getting a drink. Very cute. Um, you can give them treats now and again. Um, I don't generally recommend this, especially because the treats that you, that they'll eat, I have basically no nutrition. It's just sugar. Um, so very rarely you can add to their diet, um, a little drop of honey. I personally do it on the end of a toothpick. Um, it prevents me from feeding them too much. Sometimes they'll grab the toothpick, which is really cute. Um, or you can offer little tiny, tiny, tiny itty bitty pieces of watermelon. Um, they seem to really enjoy it. I've had them grab it uh, like it's prey and, and chow down. There's a really cute video on my Instagram of an orchid mantis grabbing a piece of watermelon. And he's so excited that he just falls over. Very cute. Might have been a female. I don't actually remember. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's very cute. Um, they're just great little pets. I really enjoy it. The females are not likely to fly around. Uh, they technically can, but they, they probably won't. The males will though, uh, so be prepared for that. They will just take off. Um, they're not very good at it, but they will just, just jump into the wind and fly around. Uh, they look like little fairies. Very cute. Um, but they're small, so you do have to kind of chase them down. They will get away from you. Um, and that's, that's really, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, housing, food. Uh, humidity and temperature, that's that's mantis care. Um, they're not super complex. I think they're great pets. They live for about a year, so it's not a huge commitment. If uh, and, and the males don't even live that long, so you could get a little male orchid, and you'll probably have eight months, maybe, total. Um, they take about six months to mature to adulthood, uh, although the males do mature faster, and the males will die after about a month, so that's exciting. Uh, the females you've got about six months with, but it takes much longer for them to mature. Um, so don't get a batch of orchids expecting to get a male and female pair out of it and breed them together. It's not going to happen. Some people try to slow down the males by lowering their temperature and feeding them less, but honestly, it's just, it's not possible to successfully create viable nymphs between two orchids of the same ooth. Um, maybe someone's done it, but I think it's a bad idea anyway. Um, but breeding probably shouldn't be 
uh, the first thing on your mind if you're watching this care video, because I'm assuming that you've never had an orchid before if you're watching this video. Um, please get one first and then consider breeding later. <laughs> Uh, don't jump straight, the, don't jump the gun and, and get too excited about breeding. It's it it's a little hard. You'll lose some nymphs. Um, but that's a whole different video. I'll talk about that later. Um, so that's the orchid mantis. Um, let me just see if I can get her to do something really cute. She's been a little ornery today. Um, hey now, that's unnecessary. There we go. So this is the orchid mantis. Um, they're beautiful. They'll eat just about anything you offer to them. And uh, they're really stupid, which is great. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll have the opportunity to raise an orchid of your own. And uh, if you watched my video and you got one, I'd love to see a picture of it. Uh, so you can send it to me on Instagram. Uh, I technically have a Facebook, but um, but yeah, send it to me on Instagram, and if you don't have an Instagram, send it to me on Facebook. But, um, I'll try to keep a lookout. Um, I'd love to see your orchid babies. Um, and I'll probably produce a, be producing some more care videos pretty soon. Um, I've had a lot of people ask for them, and so, oh no, please stay. Please stay in there. Please stay. The only problem with these containers is they like to climb up, so when you flip the lid over, they'll, uh, you know, try to get out. Um, I will. I have a video uh, that I recorded and haven't uploaded, so I'm going to try and get that edited, but who knows when I'll get to it. My recording schedule is not one. Um, but I've had a lot of requests for care videos, and so I want to be putting up care videos that are specific to each species of mantis that people might want to own. Um, these generalized mantis care videos that have been going up on a lot of big pet channels are uh, not nearly as helpful as I think the uh, the channels putting them out think they are. Um, so if you're ever thinking about getting an orchid, great video to watch, I think, this one. Um, hopefully you'd know that, though, because you'd have watched it to get this far. If you skip to the end and this is the first thing you're hearing, why did you click on this video? <laughs> Uh, so this is the orchid mantis. Uh, hopefully next time I'll be bringing you a video about ghost mantises. Um, they're a great beginner mantis, so if these guys seem a little overwhelming, uh, the ghost is a great beginner mantis. Oh no, don't bark, I'm almost done! I'll see you next time, uh, and please leave a comment if you enjoyed. I'm not gonna demand you like or share or click the bell icon. <laughs> um, do that if you want to, but I would love to hear what you think, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, until next time!